he will get as much time as he wants. Jonathan, please discuss a moment or event in history that has been mostly forgotten or overlooked. I went with not one, but two, and I went with the word overlooked. And I had to stick with two things that happened in my lifetime. I would love to go back to 1950 or 1960, but I'm not like Vince Russo. I don't remember living during those decades. So I had to go to two things that happened in the last 25 years. And I'm going to go with 9-11 as my one because I feel like we don't even understand or realize the tear and the fear and all of the stuff that everybody went through back on November, or excuse me, September 11th, 2001. And I feel like every single year we do it once and then we move on because that's kind of how human beings do it right now. When one number eight, one number 24, Kobe Bean Bryant tragically passed away just miles from where I'm sitting right now. And we still talk about Kobe as if he is still alive. I've never seen an athlete so beloved. And after he passes away, we still tell stories as if he's still here. Well said. And especially if we know the truth, guys and gals and pals. And that's what Jonathan Coachman has given us. Yeah, plane crashes or, uh, or even planes that might uh, be hiding missiles. Uh firing at towers, pretending to crash into them. Who knows, guys and gals? A different topic for a different time. Funny how red traffic control wasn't really alert at that time. A lot of things that happened, guys and gals, in this country are considered funny. Uh, but we're exploring that. We're going knee-deep right now. Here you gals, go. we're officially going to go. Here we go. Stevie Ray, please answer the following, my friend. Please discuss a moment or event in history that has most been forgotten or overlooked. We overlook 9-11 and the atrocities that happened on 9-11. Why? because so many things about 9-11 was never explained to us. They say an airplane, my government told me an airplane crashed in Shanksville, I never saw it. My government told me that an airplane crashed in the Pentagon, I never saw it. But yet we're supposed to believe what they tell us and yet they don't even bring it up anymore. If you look at when 9-11 happened, how so many people in the United States of America came together as one. So many people had love for each other. So many people tolerated each other. And here it is a little over 20 years later, and all of a sudden we're at each other's throats again. How would someone in a country like the United States of America wake up one day and your house is blown up and your little child head is blown off right in front of your face and you don't even know why? Nobody even addresses it. Because when we, as the United States of America, are afraid of something, we'll go along with whatever the government wants to do because they told you to be afraid. But if you're going to string me along like a puppet, give me something. I'm not just going to go along to get along. So when it comes to 9-11, that's what I got a problem with. Gulf of Tonkin, yes, 9-11, etc., etc. They all started because of a effing lie. How can you trust your military and CIA when those same military and CIA killed a president that has been so beloved over the years? What about the birth, the birth of our savior, Jesus Christ? It's all going up up there and he's looking down and he's, he's seeing this mess that we created. This God said, son, I'm sending you down there. I'm taking you off the throne. <laughs> Put those fruits down. Put down that ice cream sundae. I he came down, and here's a wrestling term the two of you might understand. What did he do, Stevie? He tried to smarten us all up. Mm -hmm. He tried to tell us, brothers, sisters, and even you, Stevie Ray, this is how you're supposed to live your life. Vince Russo, the passion that you brought, I love it. That just was moving. I felt like I was going to church, to be honest. And that's not a bad thing. And as far as who won, I have to go with Vince Russo. Okay. For this vote. Look at this. Premature celebration. So when I kind of circle back around to everything, I think Stevie, with the topic, went deeper into it and kind of foreshadowed that we are aiming to have it be forgotten. If I jump down, I'm not getting back up. Then I have, <laughs> then I have behind me Greg the Hammer Valentine going, 
I ain't jumping down either. And that's my brother-in-law. So, you know, I got to give it to the coach on this one. Sorry, Stevie. Sorry, Vince, for thinking Stevie's in my pocket. But I listened to all of you and you all had a good argument. And thank you very much. The question I have for all three of these gentlemen, beginning with Jonathan, is in your opinion, who or what, Jonathan, is the greatest enemy of mankind? And Kind. The greatest enemy of mankind. I just wanted to hear you say it one more time, Avi. It's the capital F word. And you know I'm not going to swear here on your show. It is fear. And to me, it's why mankind kind of looks at themselves more than they look at anybody else. And I don't care if you stay here in the United States or whether you go to a lot of countries that we visited in our world of wrestling, whether it's Japan. They're fearful. We're fearful to even make a statement. We're fearful of putting our stuff out there because maybe somebody will cancel us in 2024. To me, this was a really easy one. The enemy of mankind right now always be fear. Man's biggest adversary on this earth is himself because man has never learned from is because of man's quest for control man's quest for power. We've been talking about war. What has man learned from war? Absolutely nothing. If you look at things right now, how he uses religion to control the masses, how he uses the media to control the masses. I don't want to say the wrong thing because I might get canceled out. That is man's control over man. Man's quest for the unknown man quest to control everything will be man's downfall as we know it so man should fear himself because he never learns is great the greatest enemy of mankind it is they it is absolutely the elite who run this country because the elite controls the media the elite controls politics the elites elites control big business the elites control big pharma the the elites control our lives to the point of like we are mindless thoughtless emotionless sheep so for this I'm afraid, therefore I have to go to the original, which was driven by all of these, and vote for Coach because of Coach. Fear. Thank Coach you. Coach gets five points Thank from you. one of our judges. But then Russo, he took fear, he took control, you interweaved it together, and you kind of connected those two ideas, and I thought that is eventually what uh, won me over. Uh, so I'm, my, my vote goes for... Um, mm. In this concept, that was the root cause. Yeah. We fear the elite because they put they have so much power they can make you disappear they can cancel you they can have you killed they can ruin your family ruin your finances when you get right down to it and everybody's a little bit afraid of that so for that reason that particular drill down and he started right out with it succinct and to the point i have to give my vote to coach with 24 votes and definitely moving on to the next round is mr stevie ray who was the top vote getter in this tournament to the surprise of no one, including this very Shocking. gracious host, and tied at 18 points, and also moving on to the next round are Vince Russo and Jonathan Coachman, who are now in the next round. They tied each other, 18 points. We're going to split them apart. Who knows? John